And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two good brothers with me. Yes, I just said with me twice because I, because I call this on the fly. We ha we have currently muted the eternally late and gay good brother Doku. And in the red corner we have the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadaria Enterprises who just engaged in a hostile takeover with Z with um with Zaya Japan. Yes. And, and the bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix. Well, as uh, Doku is eternally late and gay and not here to speak for himself, uh, I won't attack him. Um, I don't hit a man when he's down. To steal a monk's line, I kick him. It's more efficient. <clears throat> but this week we're once again going th going through another ca another casting class which means another t another 10 levels of fun and another instance where I, where I get to bitch about D&D traditions when do you never not bitch about D&D traditions though when I'm playing something that isn't D&D well then, this Valley of the Judged is always you bitching about D and D traditions. <laughs> because that because that ends up being the thing that always ends up pissing me off, especially when I have to deal with the OSR crowd. In yes. Incidentally, I firmly believe that the biggest problem I have with the OSR is that it is called the OSR. That be by that I mean that it's an identity. Is the pro we, is my problem. Can we call it can we can we call it the uh the OGP, the Old Grog Party. Well, since I can't call them as much as I'd like to call the, them, um, as much as I'd like to call them Johns, as a <laughs> nod to Robin Hood men in tights, I can't. <laughs> but this time around, we're dealing with the cleric. Who has been? Who has been the? I can do a little bit of everything, even more than the bard. The problem is the cl the cleric ends up being somebody who's useful. Admit, there. Whenever you have multi-role characters in D and D, they end up falling into one of two extremes. The former extreme we've dealt with plenty of times when we talked about the ranger and, to a lesser degree, the bard. That being somebody who can who can dip a little bit into multiple things. But, uh, but ends up being useless compared to somebody who's focused in those things. The cleric is the opposite end of the spectrum. They can do multiple things, and they don't suck at any of them. Yes. Now, yes. the idea with the cleric is to, is to be a representative of, say, Knights Templar and Hospitaliers of medieval times. That was the, that was the original intent. As time has passed, it's been through the specific focus of its worship, and that's where we get the whole cleric domain thing as time went on. So, clerics are one of the big are one of the big four, one of the first four classes back up all the way back in OD and D. Um, they were a caster who could wear heavy armor and use a shield. They were forbidden from using weapons that were not bludgeoning because they desired to avoid bloodshed, even if they're evil clerics. Make of that what you will. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's forget the fact that the only the only reason you're avoiding bloodshed with a bludgeoning weapon is because all the bleeding is happening on the inside. I will I will admit that the be that the best response to this kind of thing comes from Shepherd Book in Firefly. Oh, well, isn't the doesn't isn't the good book specific specific about killing? Quite specific. It is, however, slightly fuzzy on the subject of kneecaps. <laughs> oh. I would even argue that the good book is quite specific on the subject of killing. You can do it in the name of God if it's righteous. Mm -hmm. um, plus, it, plus, the, plus, there's, al there's also the fact that one of that one of the best priest characters in any anime, and f fight me on this, Nicholas D. Wolfwood. Was still using was using rubber bullets the whole time, well, most of the time. 
I don't think that was a rubber rocket, monk. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. You, um, Cyclops's eye beams are technically concussive. That's because it's a literal portal to the dimension of force. <laughs> Let's let's uh, ignore the fact that that is a force coming out at yes. <laughs> hey, was that enough force to break his bones? Yes. Was that enough force to melt melt metal? Yes. Was that enough force to break concrete? Yes. W- which one is it? Yes. <laughs> the force of yes. Yes. <laughs> but I'm just I'm just pointing. Now the only missile weapons that they had was it was the was the sling, which who the hell do you know actually uses a sling? Unironically, in David. Okay, but bes- okay, besides <laughs> <laughs> besides that, and he and he had the and he had the uh, he had the advantage of 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 having God in his sight and being extraordinary. So does every lucky. cleric. <laughs> so does every fucking cleric. Oh, All they po- got to do is cast guidance. The point is. In D and D's setup, the sling has always been shit. Oh no, it's one d four damage at distance. Laughs in magic missile. <laughs> By the way, everybody, what I what I just did that laugh that that's laughing in magic missile. Mm-hmm. Um, now, of course, there's the whole thing with the holy symbol, which could be used to turn away or destroy undead. Which is, or if you were an evil cleric, it could take over and somebody else is undead. Could cast spells to mend wounds and cure ailments, and to protect and buff up the party, some to afflict opponents and some utility spells. They didn't get a whole lot of ranged attack spells at the time, except for Flame Strike, which was ridiculously OP. Um, <laughs> many of the cleric spells were patterned after religious miracles. And but the the big re- the big reason why nobody wanted to play a cleric well they were the only means of healing and beca- and became a and became a walking first aid kit it almost sounds like OD&D clerics would have fit right in with redo of healer I'm just gonna heal the world real quick. So everybody's probably... oh now you finally show up all it took was to mention was to mention redo of healer and you show up <laughs> uh, well, I was here a few minutes before that. I suffer from two curses known as a, a 22 and a 21 pound Maine Coon kitten, respectively. They cause natural disasters on a nightly basis. I, you see, I knew there was such a thing as dog whistling, Monk, but apparently Doku whistling is mentioning any of the cursed anime. <laughs> um, You're not entirely wrong. <laughs> yeah. Now... Because, um, now because now um because of the, because of all that they they've been they've been a ba- they've been a basic class in the Beckme era, um, I'd say I'd say I'd say for a lot for a lot of people especially in the eighties their um idea of a cleric comes from uh, comes from uh, comes from Larry Elmore's art of Alina, um, who Frank Mentz who Frank Mentzer killed off. Because he's a dick. Um, <laughs> the compa- the companion set had druids as a prestige class of sorts for clerics, but we've already covered that. Um, or- originally, they were restricted to humans. Um, sen- since you had the whole thing of race as cl- as class, which I have never liked and will ne- and will always pick on until I'm dead. Um, some splat books would add demi human or or monster piece monster PCs that were cleric esque. Um you had the But dwarf. we're not clerics. Yeah. Most non human clerics fall, fell under shamans. With Eve, with elves of course using that kind of thing. Um issue one seventy eight of Dragon put in the elf cleric as part of the Voyage of the Princess Ark, and I have no idea why I know that. Because I'm probably probably because I'm insane. Um because you hate elves. Remember, when we fixate on the things we hate, we remember more things about them. That's probably that's probably why I have a library dedicated to all my grudges. It's it all makes sense, Doku. The reason he remembers d- details about things he hates is because of the book. 
Oh, uh, never underestimate the book of grudges. Yeah. Um. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot to say about the transition between OD and D to first edition. They didn't change too much. Um. Aside f aside from the fact that they got D eight hit points instead of D six. That and um. That and the whole race as class thing died with eight with AD and D. Good. Um, so now you could have a D8 HP and wear heavy armor and cast divine magic. Mm -hmm. Um. Dragon Dragonlance had clerics in a on again off again affair because Dragonlance's deities are are assholes, like most deities in fantasy fiction. Dragonlance's deities are such assholes, they removed magic for a while. Mm -hmm. oh. And then they removed all the dragons. How do you have Dragonlance without dragons, you dumb fuck gods? Like we said, the gods are dicks. This is just, yes, it's it's following a, a long tradition of, of European pantheons being a bunch of fucking assholes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Depending depending on the country, emphasis on the fucking. Depending on the country, emphasis on the assholes. Mm -hmm. Laughs in our fueta. <laughs> <laughs> um, Laughs in Greek pederasty. <laughs> you know, do you remember when there was? Do you remember when there was that meme circling about of Blight from Batman Beyond doing the whole? Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? Somebody <laughs> did a Greek version of that of. Of um of Terry as uh, as any Greek hero and Blight as Zeus with the whole who are you you banged my mom do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? <laughs> uh, it's funny because it's true. It's... Let's 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 not let's not forget um Perseus is the son of Zeus. Perseus is also descended from Hercules. Therefore, Zeus is both, is both Perseus. Actually, I actually I take I take it back. I think it's the other way around. Sorry. The point is, Zeus is both a father and a grandfather. There's a future Amara, a Futurama episode about this. <laughs> Any anyway, um, second edition AD and D clerics started becoming more, um, uh, more hybrid, um. Obviously, Dru obviously druids got got buffed, and that and that's where we got the whole shape shifting, which we covered um, previously. Um, this is also where we started to see the first inklings of the do of the domain concept. I'd say, where um, yeah, yeah, you could you could see the 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 vestiges of that starting to grow in second. Yeah. Um. But the the big pro the big problem, and this is despite how clear how useful clerics can be, the big problem went for, throughout all of this, and the reason why for the longest time they were they have not been appealing to play, is because is because of the fact that they were treated as the heel bot, where all they they'd be doing is just pat is just patching up everybody else instead of getting involved when the when the action starts. Um. TSR did put out some optional rules for priests of special mythoi, where you could handpick your spells, and for based up based on based on certain mythos, um, and because and because of that, you could you could make a cl a cleric that did that was not was not as shitty because. One uh, one uh, one other thing that was that's that was in TSR era D and D that I don't miss. Separate XP thresholds for different classes. Hmm. I remember that. Basic basically, the idea with these kind of things is balancing characters across a campaign instead of balancing them at given levels. And I know yep. the I know the grogs hate the term game balance, but the but here's the problem: when a lot of people talk about how much they hate game balance, they're conflating game balance with characters being the same. The reason that get the reason, and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure John Wick is also in this category, but um, fuck him. Um, 
No, not that one. I don't. Um, I do not feel like dying by by someone stabbing me with a pencil. But the I, the whole the reason why balance is is seen as important is so that you don't have the quadratic issue that we've talked that we've talked about, where you have one you have one or two archetypes of characters that shine clearly above the rest. And Doku says, "Death by teacup." Why would cr why, was, good movie. why would crack teacup want to kill me? Fair point, but I don't know. Reddick reference seemed appropriate, so. Yeah. Um. Now, of course, Dark Sun had Templars instead of clerics, um, which were but but, but um, nobody's playing them because they're the bad guys. Jadis Volt, motherfucker! I'll play one. <laughs> um, given given the given the kind of given the kind of setting that Dark Sun is, not an, not entirely sure uh, it's a good idea. Ah, but it would be interesting and fun, Monk. Mm -hmm. May not true. be a good idea, but it will be fun. Fair point. Then we get to third edition, and this is where we have to bring back our old punching bag, Codzilla. <laughs> the other half of the cod is the cleric. Yep. Now, our <laughs> our um, clerics is overpowered as druids. No, the problem they're is they're more. <laughs> no, they're they're more they're more op they're more op because at the very least druids get op get op because of all the shape shifting that they, that they can pull out of their ass. Clerics don't need shape shifting. Slap some heavy armor on and make them do divine miracles all day long, and things just die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there. Now, most of the third edition spells were it were were in the second edition spell book, but there were limitations that, for some people, made it more of a curiosity. But if you di but here here's where that whole you need you need to have the cleric really rears its worst head because if you did not have a cleric or druid in your group your group tended to die yep um uh, which is what which is why you had the whole thing of okay who's playing the cleric um now they had proficiency in in they had proficiency in simple weapons and armor um but the problem that which some people would say, but that means that they don't have the best weapons. Yeah, except one of those weapon, one of those melee weapons that they can go with is the is is um is stuff is stuff like is stuff like da daggers and sickles, a crossbow, or a long spear. Um, and spear builds are a very were very are, still are I'd say very underrated. A lot. Um, now, the now um, the the other the other big the other big problem is you have you have you have the fact that they can use almost almost as they can be just as well equipped as a fighter. They can cast, and I do, I do and I th I don't remember if they had and they um. They were borderline nat. They were borderline natural casters in terms of not needing to do the kind of prepping that, say, wizards had to do. They, of course, still had turn on turn and destroy undead, and and being and being able to heal. And none of these they sucked at. Usually, when usually when a class has multiple things it can do, it's at a gimped rate compared to a focused. That did not happen here. Um. And that that is the reason why why Codzilla why Codzilla is a problem, because of the fact that you, that with a cleric they can do they can do the kind of things that entire parties do. Much in the same way that say Superman once he started really getting hit with power creep was entire superhero casts all by himself. Uh, five clerics walk into a bar. Five clerics walk into a bar. The sick, the the sixth one ducks. <laughs> uh, uh, five clerics walk into a tavern. Everybody leaves without being drunk, pissed off. 
<laughs> yeah, but what if they're war clerics? Well, and everybody leaves missing their liver. <laughs> and pissed off. Well, no, they're dying. They have to go to some other uh, cleric to ask for a, a cure major wounds. I, I was gonna, and I they... was gonna go with um, five, five storm clerics walk into a bar. It's not there oh, anymore. Fun. I wasn't gonna say it's not there anymore. I was going to say either you've devoted it to to the lightning, and thus uh, now everybody is super drunk, or uh, a bolt caught one of the dwarven ale barrels and now the entire town's not there anymore yeah now pathfinder decided to try and re try and rein in the clerics but like with a lot of paizo's attempts to improve things they only did so half-assed they don't they nerfed a lot of the spells they took away heavy armor proficiency they get um they buffed up dom they buffed up domains and gave any cleric the all clerics the favored weapon of what of their deity. They're only they're a little more melee capable than the average wizard, but that but um when you consider when you consider all the love that spellcasters get in the in these editions, that's not that's um cold comfort if you ask me. Um, Turn undead it was re was redone as channel energy, which I thought was an improvement because. Well, why why is say a why say a cleric of storms still so concerned about undead? It's one it's one of the one of those things that all, that always we, always weirded me out. Um, oh, oh, so many different domains are <clears throat> worried about the undead. Yeah. Well, because the undead are an affront to the natural order. But you're not a nature or life cleric. Why does that matter? Natural order. Bruh. You're a war cleric. Go kill more things. That's what your god wants you to do. Doesn't matter if they're undead or not. Mm -hmm. It's a... Uh, I think what what I would call it, if it were me, and it is me, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, is a vestige of character stereotype actually the word cleric invokes in many people a pop culture thought um to someone who is clergy some sort of religious holy man we are we are yeah we already we already kind of dipped into dipped into this kind of thing with um with it clearly trying to be the the more um the more relig the more religious knightly orders, like say knights T knights templar. Yes, but I mean clerics clerics are even beyond that because mm -hmm. the knights the knights templar are still very much more like what most people think of as a typical paladin. Um, mm -hmm. The the clerics invoke. We, I know a lot of people who, when they hear the word cleric, they think what most people would call a cardinal in Catholicism. Um. And as such, the stereotypes start to fall on them of, well, if you're a person of God, you, you uh, do not like things which are aberrant to God. And well, I've, noticed a, I've noticed a lot of people also can, uh, when they hear cleric, they tend to confuse cleric with priests, so I think that just adds to the confusion. And the thing... But the, the, ultimate, the ultimate problem is that when... This the the whole t the whole turn on dead thing it is um is something that ends up running into conflict when as time passed um there was a there was a larger emphasis on g on granting power through domains, which is why channeling and allowing other benefits to come from channeling energy was the smart move to go with. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, gr granted, Turn Undead is st is still is still a still has a mimet a mimetic weight, but not a whole lot you can do about that. Mm. Um. Turn and rebuke. Yeah. Now, fourth edition, they had when I distinctly remember threads on the on the design where they specifically said they did not want. They wanted to get rid of the mandatoriness of clerics, which was which was which was one of the reasons why 
um, heal why healing surges were introduced. Mm -hmm. And whenever I bring this kind of thing up, people will say fifth edition has healing surges that they're called the hit die, not the same. Hit die are randomized. Healing surges weren't. I've cov I've covered this specifically. And pretty extensively. Mm -hmm. Now, grant now granted, leaders are going to be better at healing than ev than everybody else, but everybody can have some measure of healing, so they don't need to rely on the cleric. Um, but even even with that, the cleric still had a was still pretty open when it came to its playstyle. Um, if you want if you wanted to get up and close, you could do that. If you wanted to go if you wanted to go in range, you could. You could um, you could do that, um, and of co of course um, instead instead of while you did have while you did have turn undead, that was one of your channel divinity powers, um, and you could and you could get other ones depending on your um, depending on if you took a feat based on which whichever god that you worshipped. Um, Fifth has tried to do the same thing, but they they kind of took a step backwards and half neutered it. Yeah, as I've mentioned, as I mentioned in that in that one lengthy review of Fifth Edition that I did, that I don't that I don't completely stand by because it was in my old format. A common issue that I've ha that I've had with Fifth Edition is missing is missing the point of what came before. Um. But it's also why it's also why uh, Ash continually and consistently calls it a 3.5 retirement home. It pre it it pre it pretty much it it pretty much had um, one could if anything is the 3.5 retirement home I'd say it I'd say it's Pathfinder first but that's just me. Um. Now, for fifth, they dis the attempt was to try and make clerics the primary div primary divine spell spellcasters and fo and focus more on that, and get and give and give more um, firepower. Um, because because of, because of that, that you can't the heal dispenser thing isn't qu isn't quite a th isn't quite a thing. Um, all the buff spells got got ner got nerfed. But there's, but there's also the, there's also the fact that um, Chen, um, we st we still have we once again still have the problem with spell casting where con where concentration is an epidemic. But I would I would say I would say that he that um. That he that um, healing isn't a, isn't as mu isn't as much of a in your face feature as it ha as it has been in the in the past. Now that brings us to the level up version, which aside from the fact that we're still dealing with D eight, we're s but one thing that I find in one thing that I find very interesting. They have no armor proficiency. They have no armor proficiency and only a simple weapon proficiency. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> they, uh... They're seen more as, um... At least from the introduction here. They're not seen as a as a combat centric class. They're seen as a religious centric class. Yeah. Personally, I'm, personally, I'm um, I'm fu I'm fine with. I'm get I'm guessing that that some of the combat centric focus things are going are going to be are going to be pivoted over to the um, paladin equivalent. Well, and you also get to. Ah, well, we'll get to that. Never mind. That's part of the kit. Uh, now, at first level, we have we have we have a choice between th between three options: um, armor of faith, 
Sacred Archery, and Spirit Soldier. Um, Which is what gives you your proficiencies with armors and weapons if you choose one of those two. Yeah. Or or you or you or you could go for, you could go for the if somebody wants to do the divine archer they have sacred archery and um, armor of faith I I see I see that as um as some as somebody wanting to delve a little bit into into being a bit monkish but not going full monk. Well, I mean, it is armor of faith is essentially the, the monk uh, monk AC mm -hmm. rules. Uh, but then, you know, adds on the whole, in addition to spells you normally prepare, you always have Shield of Faith prepared. Yeah. And let me, let me, re let me refresh my memory about, about Shield of Faith. Shield of Faith, it's... It is a it is a first level spell that just get that just gives you plus two to AC for its dur for its duration. So it's a shittier mage armor. Got it. Uh, duration duration is concentration up to ten minutes. Once again, the whole thing with concentration we've talked about that. Yeah, and last remember that last week was the first place we saw concentration mentioned amongst all these uh all these particular playtest documents. Yeah. Um. We also get sick when it comes to when it comes to the three of these. I'd say I'd say all I'd say all um I'd say all three of them would be would be put in blue in Ash's um, setup. Um, Ash, for the record, is is not here because he double booked. Um. When it com but when it comes to when it com when it comes to these to these three. I don't see it could be I don't see armor of faith being more useful than the other two. Um I don't know. I actually don't know if he would have put them in blue. Actually, I, I think I, I think he would have put them in yellow. At, yeah, at now, now, now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, I can see that because it's a it's a case of it's a case of um, adding the other two are just adding a proficiency package whereas armor of faith is is get, is giving you an equivalent to a perf to to that package and um and an additional uh, additional um setup yeah of course i oh, i i think because there's because there's no real uh narrative tie and the mechanical ties are just why didn't you just make these parts of subclasses instead instead of making them part of a class feature like, why not make subclasses called uh, Faithful Wanderer, Sacred Archer, and Spirit Soldier, and just give them these packages then? Mm -hmm. I, honest, I honestly don't think that these would be marked very high in his assessment. Yep. Um, the other thing that we get at first level is Sacred Call, which is a, a which again is a, a case of t of ta of taking something and. We have magnetic missionary, ordination, and zeal of the convert. Um, I I see I see ash marking these higher, mm -hmm. um, specifically ordination. I f I find him marking ordination in blue because it has those whole his his um, preferred rather than oh you just add some add numbers to a skill check it's. Oh, this is a specific effect that your thing does. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I see him marking both ordination and zeal in blue, and I could see him uh, uh, actually tagging magnetic missionary in blue as well. Um, let's go over these for a second. Um, let's start with magnetic missionary. Yeah. So uh, with this, what it is, you know, your public presence is irresistible. Uh, crowds come around you. Um, you gain the proficiency in performance, which is probably where Ash would have his biggest issue. But <clears throat> whenever you use the performance to deliver a sermon or sing in a town or city, uh, even if on a failed check other than a natural botch, a one, uh, you still attract a crowd of people no smaller than your spell save DC. I think that would... Uh, that, that would... That would probably tickle a little bit of the roleplay fancy, the the narrative fodder that he likes uh, mm -hmm. in his heart there. Um, 
definitely with ordination. Like ordination just has this huge. Uh, your mission in the world is supported by the faith community who called you to religious service. As a formal leader within your religious order, you are expected to perform the religious ceremonies of your faith, including weddings and funerals. In exchange, members of your faith provide you and your companions with food, lodging, and a modest lifestyle. Additionally, if your congregation or order is able, they send you letters with regular updates about their well-being. They are willing to help connect you with other chapters of your faith through letters of introduction. So, there's no add numbers here. This is a mechanical hook for narrative hooks. Mm -hmm. This is this is a, a mechanism which enables a DM at to at any point during the journey say, "Hey, cleric guy, a messenger uh, comes up to your to your uh, to your group and says he has a letter for you." And you get a letter from maybe he's the butcher who, you know, saw every one of your sermons for the last 30 years or something. He's like, "Hey, I heard you're going to the town, blah, 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 where my brother lives. Uh, he's a follower, too. You know, here's, you show him my letter, and, and he'll be sure to let you guys in. You know, mm -hmm. And that's that's a fantastic uh, mechanical and narrative hook. Uh, and then with Zeal of the Convert, uh, you enthusiastically see the hand of a greater entity everywhere. Well, first I'd question if you're hallucinating, but that's beside the point. Uh, you gain advantage on persuasion checks, so there's the the adding numbers. But this is advantage, which is a little bit better than just adding straight numbers. Mm -hmm. When you evoke the name of your deity or movement during a, per a conversation with a pious person. So basically, I'm talking to you. And yes, I'm talking on behalf of our god. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and so, you know, hey, why don't you help me do this thing? Yeah, sure. But even better, it has a negative side. Uh, if the listener is negatively disposed to your greater entity or movement, you get disadvantage on the persuasion check. So, if uh, well, let's uh, <laughs> let's let's use some Faerunian gods, why don't we? Mm -hmm. If you are a cleric of Maestra and you're talking to someone who is actually a follower of Cyric, and you invoke the name of Maestra, they are not going to be willing to follow you. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, they, more likely than not, they'd want to kill you, but that's just because Cyric, the Mad God, is, well, the Mad God. Um, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're gonna call them, if you're gonna call yourself that, you better deliver. Uh, <laughs> Some of, some of the things Cyric's followers have done in the in the in the world of Toril on the continent of Faerun uh, have been pretty batshit. So I mean, he, he lives up to his name. On a scale, um, how batshit on a scale from one to Melkavian? Not in plants. <laughs> Good answer. Um, one of them blocked out the sun by exploding pieces of a of a. Uh, of a, uh, I don't technically think he was a uh, follower of Cyric, but he used the followers of Cyric to his advantage. Exploded a city into lower orbit to block out the sun just long enough that he could walk outside and see daylight while under the shadow of these chunks of land, because he was technically a being that could no longer stand daylight. Modern so, problems take modern solutions. <laughs> You, you say one, one. You say one to Malkavian. I don't think you went far enough. No. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But especially, you know, Zeal of the Convert mm -hmm. it has both a positive and negative side that mm -hmm. actually plays into, you know, narrative focus there, and I really like it. Yeah. Plus, and I think Ash would have too. Plus, it allow it allows it allows just it allows you to have somebody who's devoted to a de to a deity that has a tendency to piss everyone off this is where your uh, chaotic stupid uh paladins go to die mm -hmm. um, <laughs> now when it comes to spell casting it's exactly the same as it as in vanilla so there's not a whole lot to cover on that front 
Plus, without knowing more about spell casting within level up 5e, we can't really comment. Mm -hmm. um, apparent, apparently, you, apparently, you have unless I'm unless I'm misreading that there's already there's already a few spells that you know that you're going to be knowing by default. One of them being the thaumaturgy cantrip, which I'd have to check. If that if that's also the case when it comes to let's see cantrips N nope um the th the thaumaturgy cantrip is not is not automatically available in vanilla um it is interesting that they put that they put in um. They put in a, a aside for the ceremony spell, and looking at looking at the sp looking at the spell, it looks the format looks looks like the format that you'd see for vanilla for vanilla spells. Um. Let's see then spell casting focus. Or right, then we have the we have the divine domain. Um. Looks like the normal five E domains. Yeah, along with the along with domain spells, then we get to channel divinity. Which um mentions, you know, whatever comes from your domain and turn undead, which is pretty pretty vanilla. Yeah. Then we get to Devoted Vow, which I think is the next difference. Mm-hmm. Because instead, no, in, in in vanilla, it would you would get channel divinity, and although there was the there was the alternative of har of harness divine power, which just gave you a, just gave you one expended first level spell slot, so I can understand why that stayed in unearthed arcana. Yep. Um. But devote. Devoted, devoted vow. We have we have several cho we have several choices. So basically, basically, after much contemplation and communion with your greater entity, you take a vow to uphold certain standards of behavior beyond what is necessary for adventure. In return, you are grant you are granted a related boon for the following. So this means that this means that playing, you're giving tangible rewards for people playing according to according to their religious belief. I mean, for a cleric, that actually fits. Yeah. So let's see. We have we have cha we have chastity, which, in exchange in exchange for foregoing pleasures of the heart and flesh, you add your wisdom modifier to any saving throws made to resist being charmed. I see this as a, probably a yellow because of the whole adding numbers thing. Yeah. I mean, it's got a good narrative hook of, I don't I don't follow the the earthly pleasures. Uh, essentially, you don't stick anything in your holes, and you don't stick your thing into any holes that you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, mercy. When you when you have already succeeded on two death saving throws, you have you have advantage on death saving throws. And that's essentially, but it's in exchange for avoiding some of the following. I'm guessing this list is not ex exhaustive. Mm -hmm. In exchange for forgoing bloodshed, such as torture, attacking unconscious creatures, oh, uh, no uh, sneak attacks for your cleric, mm -hmm. dealing lethal wounds to creatures you reduce to zero hit points, you are yourself granted mercy. I, g I think I think I see this one as yellow as well because it doesn't seem to give us a, a, a big enough advantage for what you are foregoing. Yeah. Um, then again, maybe maybe I can see arguments for both yellow and blue here with with Ash. Yeah. Um. I, I love. Uh, I, I bet Ash just loves the fact that he knows we, he affects these even when he's not here because now he we've got his rating system. Yeah, that's that seems to be the way of things. Um, poverty. Let's see. In exchange for forgoing material luxury, vendors who are not explicitly opposed to your greater deity are compelled to give you heavy discounts of up to twenty percent, and in keeps offer free lodging. I'd say this one would probably be a bit more in blue. 
it it definitely be in in blue um because you're you're literally submitting yourself to i'm wearing a literal sackcloth and rope Mm -hmm. and uh anyone who doesn't explicitly hate your uh your religion will be compelled to give you heavy discounts up to and including 20 percent so gm's discretion obviously Mm mm-hmm and then, of course, in keeps are all uh, any innkeep who's not. I'm guessing explicitly opposed. I'm guessing that's included in other ve- in vendors. Yeah, um, would offer free lodging. I mean, that's actually a pretty cool one. Um, yeah. In keeps offering free lodging to some guy who's in a sackcloth and rope because oh. he's just that pious. I would I would say that when that um, I f- I feel like that I feel like there should be a few more cov few more caveats in term in terms of how far you're going with the whole vow of poverty on this like like say i was going to say you could you can't ha- you can't have magic items but that might be going a little bit too far um i i think by material luxury what it means is um you know you don't dress in silk and satin you don't you don't really do all the you, you're austere but mm-hmm. Being austere does not mean foregoing good tools. Being austere means you forego comfort. Yeah. Uh, so a magical item that helps you, especially if it's a magical item that helps you with, you know, spell casting or helps you with your deity and your divine source of magic, um, I don't think that that would be subject to this vow. Mm-hmm. Um, Health. Secrecy, I could see some issues com- coming fr- coming from that because there's the ten- there's the temptation to do the lone wolf shit. Um, know how Ash would do this. I'm thinking it'd be yellow. Me personally, I'd put it in red. Um, because all it does is you you've you've got a forged identity and you can't commune with your with your normal uh fellowship of of religious friends and so but i mean in an adventuring party adventuring around the world uh that may not be an issue that may not be something you'd ever care about and at that point you just get expert an expertise die on descend on deception checks for basically free on top of that it's just an expertise die it's, yeah eh. It's, uh... I th- I think I think that in s- I feel like instead the approach sh- the approach should have been that you have to you have to um you cannot use your you cannot use your a- you cannot use your actual name you have to use so- some some a- either some a- some alias um go around go around wearing a mask all the time or so- or some sort of concealment of who you actually are. Hmm. I think that would be I think that would be a little bit more reasonable within an adventuring party. Yeah, but then again, I just don't think it A, I don't think it has enough of a payback for what it's demanding. And B, I don't think that what it's demanding is really that good in the first place. Yeah, there there is still there is still the problem of of at of adding of the adding numbers issue, but that's a problem system wide. Um Yes. So that that's why I didn't that's why I didn't put I didn't put that in. I'm say, I'm saying that the the big issue is that and this is this is something that I've often had to teach out of some of my students over the years. You can't really do the lone wolf ar- archetype in a tabletop role playing game unless you are really really go- really good at get at um giving an excuse. Yeah, but I, th- I'm looking at the next one, and I'm thinking that both secrecy and severity suck. Severity, su- severity. I'm not defending. <laughs> Def- I'm putting that motherfucker in red. Yeah. In, in exchange for forgoing weaknesses such as helping or protecting others, except when it serves you, you add your wisdom mod to perception checks made to find valuable objects, while the narrative hooks for this are actually really good for evil clerics. The payoff is shit. 
Oh, you get wisdom mod for perception checks to find a valuable object. Uh, uh, that's such a specific, specific situation. You may never encounter a situation where that's necessary. Mm-hmm. Oh, he hid the he hid the valuable object in a safe. Do we know where the safe is? Um, it's hidden in his house. Well, then just break down all the walls. Take ten to break down walls, people. If you've killed everything there, you don't have to worry about it. We need to find the safe. Take ten to search. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't have to. There's no time limit. You just take ten. I. I. I like what they tried to do with the narrative hook. I'll admit that because it's good for evil clerics. But the payoff is so shit that I can't see this in anything but red. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Fuck. I am, Fuck I am reminded of the Sacred Vow class feature for the monk class in uh, Fantasy Craft. Now, something I, something I need to note, monk is a expert class, meaning it's a prestige class that you can't get until your 10th level. Actually, no, actually, no, 5th level, what am I saying? It's master that was, um, that was 10th level. But you in that you can you can walk either the discipline harmony or righteous righteousness or purity paths and when you take one of those paths you take its vow so for ex for example with vow of discipline you can you must never fail a resolve check or a will save with vow of harmony you must never attack a a character that has not attacked you or who is helpless unconscious or dying with vow of purity you can never keep more than 50 silver worth of gear or keep holdings or magic items as prizes. Also, the coin in hand and stake must be zero by the end of each adventure. Vow of Righteousness, you may never make or cooperate in ambush, bluff, or coerce checks. As, lo as long as you comply with the vow, your wisdom is considered two points higher than normal. If you violate it, you lose the benefit for the rest of the adventure. Wait, wait, wait a minute. The vow of righteousness is is literally you have to be lawful, stupid. You, you cannot make. Arguably, since you cannot make or cooperate in ambush, bluff, or coerce, um, as yeah, you... that's that's a lawful, stupid. That's a lawful, stupid. <laughs> uh, we're gonna sneak up on these guys in the night. Okay, you guys have fun, but but we need your divine spells. Nope, can't do it. Why not? I have a vow of righteousness. I can't sneak up on sleeping guys. We have to face them in open daylight. After we've, uh, <laughs> I just really, we've... actually, um, I I gotta stop you there. It's something worse than lawful stupid. Oh God. Vow of righteousness is a clanner. Oh my God. <laughs> <sighs> They're not not just any. They can. They cannot. They cannot do. They cannot do the, any sort of any sort of sneak attacking because they have to declare former Batchel and then bid away all their forces so that they can get their asses kicked by a jumped up telecom company. <laughs> Just remember, this, pay your fucking bills. This is true. Oh. But the the idea of vows, I like. It's again, it's again that whole narrative arc thing that we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. The problem that I think we have is that for a lot of these, the payoff does not make the does not make the price worth it. Well, and it's especially these last three, all the S's, which is weird because you figure triple S would be triple S rank and they should all be good, right? Um, silence I could see in yellow rather than in red because. Mm -hmm. In exchange for speaking only to cast spells, okay, so all you can do is vocal components for spells, you can't say anything else, but that doesn't mean you couldn't learn sign language. Um, <clears throat> you are able to compel other creatures to action with only a glance. That sounds cool, but then they describe what that means. When a creature within 10 feet of you makes a persuasion check, you may add your wisdom modifier to the result. That is stupid. You're not compelling somebody. Somebody else is compelling somebody, and you're using your ominous presence to help them. Mm -hmm. uh, if this were, if this were, uh, if I were to rework this so that you're the one compelling somebody, 
It'd be when you attempt to, you know, make a creature within 10 feet of you uh, talk, mm -hmm. your, your, your silent presence is unnerving and you have a greater advantage at making them say something they wouldn't normally say. Granted, you know, with with, some, with something like that, it could it could just end up falling into a, into a specific bonus. But at the very least, there's there, there's enough context with that bonus. Yeah, you you know, you look at a guy who maybe you've been chasing him through the back alleys because you thought he stole from the lady who was buying bread for her starving children, and you get him cornered, and you stare him down. And, and you say, I want to make him say something as per this class feature because I'm staring him down. DM could say he blurts out, I needed it for my kids too! And, uh, and there you go. You just made Javert, didn't you? <laughs> no, I did not make Russell Crowe. I feel so bad for Hugh Jackman and Russell Crowe. They both know how to sing, and they both were t given terrible direction in that movie. I ended up making a drinking game for every Dutch angle I saw in that movie. Why aren't you dead? Because I was because I was smart enough to make sure to make sure that I was drinking root beer and not beer. <sighs> I was just highly caffeinated. Okay. And, anyway. Um, third level exploration next. We 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 know how this works. Same with fourth level with with ASI. We know how that works. Um, also at fourth level we have sacred office. We seem to be returning to that narrative arc thing that I talked about last week. Yeah, and I'm I'm liking that because I, we, for a while there we were seeing ones without. Mm -hmm. So it look it looks like we weren't the only ones who had a problem with that. Um, yeah. So the options that you have are authority, outcast, and reputation. So author authority, um, gaining expertise, die and insight and persuasion against local leaders to whom you are recommended, but otherwise would be indifferent to you. Again, it's the boo on the on the fact that it on the fact that you're, you're that you're adding numbers, but at the very least, um, I can rationalize this. Um, Outcast, outcast, um, you have the fact you exist outside the mainstream. Pious people who are otherwise indifferent towards you are most li are more likely to become hostile towards you. Religiously maligned people who are otherwise indifferent towards you are more likely to become friendly towards you. <laughs> so, I think I, I I like I I like outcast narratively. I can say that I keep thinking of Genjo Sanzo from the Sayuki anime. <laughs> you know, somebody who has one of the highest one of the, one of the highest ranks a monk can have, and yet he's he's anything but pious. What with what with what with the fact that he is const that he, he is he he is constantly drinking, smoking, and abusing Goku. Yeah. No, I actually like it because we don't have any of the adding numbers here. I mean, I, I got to give them props when they give us a specific effect. Yeah. So, pious people, meaning people who are religious and like being religious, who are indifferent towards you, are more likely to become hostile towards you. Religiously maligned people, people who don't like religion for whatever reason who are otherwise indifferent towards you are more likely to become friendly towards you because you're not part of the mainstream. Essentially, this boils down to the mainstream hates you, the hipsters like you. <laughs> yeah. But then the, the, the second half is even better. Sermons you give and courtesy calls you make in downtrodden communities puts you in contact with a local leader who is happy to connect you with a representative of a local faction that supports the community. So this extends beyond uh, religion. You give, you're giving sermons outside of... This, this is essentially, like, outcast right now, this is Jesus. This is outright Jesus. Yeah. Um, so uh, you, heard it, you heard it here, people. 
Jesus was a hipster. <clears throat> um, but this is this is this is he's you're speaking to the people that have faith, but the religion has treated them poorly. And they love you because you recognize that it is the heart that matters and not the religion. And that's why local leaders are willing to help you talk to local factions that support their community. Mm -hmm. That's, that's just, a, this whole thing's wonderful. I can, I, can, I can pretty safely say that's blue for Ash. Yeah. Now, um, repu reputation, your, your reputation for talented ministry and good works precedes you. Common folk recognize you on site. And those who do often have a friendly disposition towards you. They often ask for counsel, favors, or blessings. The disposition of people they introduce you to are one stage better than normal. The indifferent become friendly. The hostile become indifferent. So here's Jesus again. Outcast and reputation are the two sides of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'd say repu reputation I'd probably put in yellow. Um, simply, because, simply because I don't know how how um, level up 5e is going to be handling its disposition mechanics. So um, I'm putting... I do. Here. Go ahead. Uh, there's a... I, I, I looked ahead uh, last week, actually, <laughs> um, at parts of the reputation and prestige document. Um... So, I didn't look too far into the details, but I know that going from indifferent to friendly and hostile from indifferent, it what it essentially changes in the grand mix of things is whether someone is likely to attack you on site or not, and also how difficult certain social checks are. Um, yeah, it's it, it can be a little numbersy if you if you look at the minutiae. Mm -hmm. But I really like the fact that it's like, hey, your good works have preceded you. People come to you asking for is this your help. And then um, if these people introduce you to other people, those people are more likely to like you a little bit more than they would if they just met you alone. I like it all narratively. It's a, it's a fantastic narrative hook. Um, mechanically, we'll see how they flesh out the prestige and disposition systems. Um, to see how influential it is, I would put this one on tentative blue for me. Yeah. Um. So at fifth level, we have we have empowered turning. Um. Wait. <laughs> okay. Which, unless I am mistaken, unless I am mistaken, this is this is some this is something new. Um. It. It is like it's. It, sort of, it's sort of new, but sort of not. Parts of it seem like they're inspired by what's in core, mm -hmm. but some of these effects are way different. Yeah, at fifth le at fifth level in vanilla, you just got um, destroy undead um, half challenge rating. Yeah, which is which is in this list. Yeah, but we also have command undead. We also have Command Undead and Turn Ideology, as well as Turn uh, Supernatural. Yes, I was going to say there's one more at the top of the next column. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Command Undead is essentially something evil clerics were likely to get in 3.5, and we'd seen in some form or another since then. Um, except it's limited. It's not, oh, you just take control of these undead from their previous master. It's, uh, you issue simple commands. And, uh, so they won't purposely hurt themselves. Yeah. Um. That's, and of course, and of course, um, you get this, you can choose another feature from this list at 8th, 11th, 14th, and 17th. And I get the feeling the full version will have will have more options than what we have here because we only have well four options here. I'd like to yeah. hope that there's going to be a few more um, options for empowered tur empowered turning in the full book. Um, I think it's really really fun that the only one of these empowered turnings you can't select more than once is Command Undead. Mm -hmm. But because 
Selecting more than once for destroy undead goes from CR half to one to two to three and then four. Um, which, I'm going to be honest, that's not great. No. CR four, CR four at seventeenth level. Mm-mm. That's pretty. That's pretty poor. That's piss poor. In fact, I would rather use something like turn supernatural or turn ideology. I'm going to turn undead that are evil and chaotic, but that are also elemental or celestial. Celestial you know, undead. What? In the old in the old days. The the methods when it came to tur when it came to um, when it came to things like turn and destroy undead were were based primarily on the amount of hit die that yes. a that a given undead had. Yes. I um. I'm. This may sound a bit odd, but I kind of prefer that than you than using the than using the CR conversion, sim simply because of the fact that you have a a bit of a better progression. Especially yeah. compared to something like this, I would. If I'm if I'm running this and somebody picks destroy undead, I'd probably I'd probably instead of doing this whole, um, this whole half half um. Half C half CR and in, in, instead I'd pro I'd probably have it that their that their CR has to be has to be equal to half your level or less. And just and just increase that th just increase that threshold with, with multiple picks. You know, so that destroy undead is still useful at at high levels. I know I know Ash has that whole thing of no of nobody plays past past four past um fourteenth, but um, I'd like I am pro I am probably going to inevitably challenge that assertion when I get back to DMing. Well, and not only that, but uh. Nobody plays past fourteenth is more of a meme than anything I think to him. Yeah. Um, now at n at ninth we have sacred presence, which I'd I'd say is ag again going down going down the narrative path thing that we've talked about. Um, so we have cosmic idealist, eyes of the heart, spirit and spiritual salve. So, cosmic idealist. Your moral compass aligns with the transcendent forces of the universe. Choose chaotic, evil, good, lawful, or one or one of the following: chaotic and evil, chaotic and good, lawful and evil, or lawful and good. You gain the alignment trait or alignment traits. You can identify creatures that have the same alignment as you, and you have advantage when making a mental check against them. Additionally, you do not suffer negative effects from being on a plane with which you share an alignment trait. Um. I'm putting I'm putting cosmic idealist in yellow because it's really dependent on whether or not you're in whether or not you're messing around with planar shit. And that's a very specific type of campaign. Yeah. Um well, but that's only half the power. The other half of the power is useful in any campaign. Mm -hmm. So, I can see it being yellow because of the planar stuff. Yeah. But I actually think that it would probably be blue just for the normal stuff, and then the planar stuff would be seen as a cherry on top. Um, it's it's not something that I'm going to be using a whole lot of because you already know how I feel about alignments. <laughs> Alignment is not something that you should so slavishly devote yourself to. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, eyes eyes of the heart. You have a waves of seeing folks in her character when you succeed on a contested insight check the opposing creature's charisma score if the opposing creature's charisma score is equal or less than your spell save dc for the next 24 hours you do not need to make any further checks to recognize whether that creature is lying telling the truth or excluding information and we lost doku maybe he was having the same issue i was having earlier ah um i don't know if he'll come back though Oh, it's he's having internet issues. Technology, yep. it likes to give us the middle finger. <laughs> That's true. Um, but eyes of eyes of the heart, I'm putting that one in blue. Um, I can see that. Yeah, eyes of the heart's pretty useful. Uh, it works especially well 
uh, narratively, because contested contested checks for insight could probably pop up pretty often with a cleric. Mm-hmm. And just the just having the ability to t- to tell when to tell when somebody's um, lying or not. I'll put I'll put it this way: sense motive got a lot of use in some of my third edition campaigns. Sense motive gets a lot of use even in fifth edition. Yeah, I see it all the time. Oh. Then we have spiritual salve. Your spiritual mindset has given you unique insights that can help you and your companions endure hardships. Your constant encouragements and proverbs allow allies within 30 feet of you to re-roll a constitution check or saving throw that they fail. If they do so, they must use the new roll. This feature cannot be used on saving throws made to maintain concentration on a spell. Once a creature... has used your spiritual salve to make a reroll. It cannot do so again until it has finished a long rest. Oh, you almost had it, and then you lost it. Only, and it's only a long rest, and it's only once per long rest. And it's not even you completing the long rest. It's when the creature does. That's that's terrible. I ha- I have to I have to put this in red. <laughs> I mean, I have to put it in red because it's long rests only and we don't have another resource to use. Yeah. That's... That's... Bollocks. It's fucking bollocks. (laughs) (laughs) It was this close to going in blue. And then we get to that last sentence and... Right right down the fucking tubes. I mean, even if they just changed it to a creature can use this feature from you a number of times equal to its... X modifier. Since, per... it, since it's on, co- since it's actually, you know what? How about how about this? A creature can use this a number of times per day, equal to your equal to your equal to either your Constitution modifier or your or your proficiency bonus, whichever is higher. That even that would make it better. That would put it in yellow, solidly in yellow. Mm-hmm. But once per long rest, once. No, 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 that's... You want to know what I find especially funny about the whole short rest, long rest thing that we've talked about? That a short rest is an hour and a long rest is always eight hours? Well, there's there's that, but there's also the fact that I've seen plenty of people argue that the short rest, long rest thing is a better version of encounter and daily powers from 4th. No! <laughs> no! What? You may have encounter after encounter after encounter with no short rests in between. What? Do you, do, whoever says this is... Uh, let's, let's also not forget the fact that by choosing to not recover your encounter powers in, bet- in, between, um, in between encounters... You have the you have the option of getting action points, which are going to be very important when you're at Paragon tier because you're going to be get, because one of your features is going to be rooted in that. You take an extra action, you get an extra, and you get additional effects. Yeah, there's there's a payoff for not recovering encounter powers and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas there's no payoff for not recovering these skills in fifth. You just don't have them. They're gone. And uh, uh, the whole, the whole, the whole once per long rest is something that I can rationalize at low levels. I cannot rationalize it at high levels. I can't rationalize it at all. Once per long rest, the only thing that should require a long rest is uh, restoration of HP and preparation of spells. Mm-hmm. And even then, I hate the Vancian novel or the Vancian model in in D anD. d So. I want to get, do away with that in the first place. Mm-hmm. But if, we're, if we must use the Vancian model in D&D... Um, <laughs> I, uh... I don't think... I don't... I, I don't think... That the, the, this ain't it, Chief. This ain't it, Chief. There we go. <laughs> A meme for you all, because... God damn, I have too many words, and they all want to come out at once. So this ain't it, Chief, is just the summation. It's just a summation. <sighs> yeah, I can go. I can go with that. Um, 
Then we have Providence at 10th level. Once again, the potency of your faith increases, and you choose between either Divine Intervention, in imminent, tur imminent Turning, Master Ritualist, and Prayer and prayer of Protection. Um, so you divine I, can already see it. I can already see Imminent Turning being yellow or even red. Let's see. Divine divine intervention beginning at tenth level. You can use an action to call on your deity to intervene on your behalf when your need is great. Describe the assistance you roll and roll percentile dice. If you roll a number equal or lower to your cleric level, your deity intervenes. The narrator chooses the nature of the intervention. The effect of any cleric spell or cleric domain spell would be appropriate if your deity intervenes. Means you cannot use this feature again for seven days. Otherwise, you can use it again after you finish a long rest. After each failed inter divine intervention roll, add one to the number required to succeed until it is a success, at which point it resets to your cleric level or below. At 20th level, your call for intervention succeeds automatically, no roll required. So, this, I this would be blue, but it has to be yellow. Um, I'm guessing it's because of the whole, um, the whole long rest thing. Yeah, because the seven days thing makes sense. You called your god. Your god answered. Yeah. So it's not like you can use something like that to pull yourself out of the clutch every day of the week. That's not going to happen. Your god's going to go, I mean, y you called on me once already, dude. I, if I keep coming to your beck and call, all you're going to keep doing is using me as a crutch. Seek and you shall find, bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now the whole you can't use it you can't you have to do a long rest if there was some resource drain I can understand that let's say if this effect fails you are inflicted with exhaustion one level of exhaustion that would be better because we do still this is still assuming we're still within 5th ed mm -hmm. Even though it's level up 5e, I assume the exhaustion system is still here. And if that's the case, that would be a much better way. Um, or, or better yet, you're inflicted with one level of exhaustion if you succeed, and you can't lose it, or, or you can't use it again for seven days in game. If you fail, you're inflicted with two levels of exhaustion. Because you called your god, and you called your god, and you called your god, and they still found you wanting... And so you used up, you know, all your mojo. Mm -hmm. So you're really fucking tired. Oh. Um, that that would make this blue. But because it's after you finish long long rest, no, no. <sighs> the the sad thing is, um, this is if it weren't for the long rest thing, I would have put this. I would have put this in blue, especially exactly. since you're getting you're getting an effect. You actually have to roll for this effect, and you have a capstone with it. Yeah, the capstone of, hey, at 20th level cleric, the call is answered. Every seven days, you can call divine intervention. Yeah. And uh, I, got, I gotta say, before 20th level, this is going to be frustratingly hard to get. Because it's your level or lower. So, when you first get it, 10 or lower, and if you fail, then it becomes 11 and lower, even though you're still level 10. Mm -hmm. That's... That's, uh... I mean, it makes sense that you only have a 10% chance to get your god to help you. Yeah. I, uh... Um, I do feel... <laughs> I... I'd probably end up house ruling that if you uh, that if um if your deity is of say the that um depending on your deity's domain there might be there might be some modifiers to it like say you'd have advantage on this if your deity is say um storm if you're well, if you're in if you're in that if you're in tumultuous weather you might roll with advantage on this or if you're on a battlefield and you, and your domain is war you'd have advantage for that I mean, it is yeah. adding more. It is adding more numbers, but at the very least, it's putting flavor on this kind of thing. And yeah, it would be a place where the where the where that particular god would have a bit more a bit more of a leaning because it's in their particular wheelhouse. Yeah. So it would be blue, 
but it's a yellow. Mm -hmm. Now, improve, improve turning. I'm putting that in yellow. Because all, yeah. all that it is is just is just boosting, is just adding numbers to turn on dead. That's literally... Oh, extended range. 60 feet away now. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's something you already get in the base game. Yeah. Um, Master, ri Master Ritualist. You can cast any ritual spell on the cleric spell list. You could cast as a ritual, whether or not you have it prepared. I'd say that goes in blue. Yeah. Because if it's any, if it's any cleric spell that's a ritual spell... Um, even if you don't have it prepared and you just ritual it, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That get that can ha that can have a whole lot of uses. Um, let's see, prayer prayer of prayer of protection. Choose one choose one damage type from the from the following list: cold, fire, force, lightning, necrotic, psychic, radiant, or thunder. You gain resistance to this damage type until the until the end of your next long rest. I'm putting that's a this blue. In, I'm, I um personally I, well, no, I I feel that this, this should be expand I feel that this should be extended to you and anyone within 30 feet of you. I mean that would be nice, but th this by itself mm -hmm. is a is a fantastic uh effect for just the cleric and it's after a long rest you choose the protection and it's and it's active all the way until the end of your next long rest. It's it's not you can't use this more than one long rest. It's the long rest is the trigger, so it's a little bit different, in my opinion, than when the long rest is the is the resource. Um, and it's it's I mean, what's not to like about cop? It's circle of protection. It's mm -hmm. it's Magic the Gathering, and it's it's a classic Magic the Gathering card in D and D. Um, you got your cop blue and your cop red. You got your cop white and your cop black, and you even got your cop green. On top of that, you got your cop colorless. Did you have to go with a Boston accent for that? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> um, I've been watching too much John Tron lately, so fucking sue me. <laughs> nah, I um, I don't. We didn't. We didn't end up spending. We didn't end up spending months arguing about the venue that the court would take place in. Whether whether or not I whether or not I have to go down, go go down to your level, or you have to come up to my level. Implying that they're different levels and one is lesser than the other. Um, you don't. You just don't want to come to Texas because we all got big iron on our hip. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am. If, if I am technically higher up on the planet elevation wise th from you sir there's no such thing as up on a sphere unless you're coming away from the surface <laughs> of the sphere eat shit <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying I'm just saying Texas is flat as a pancake and there and Minnesota is not flat as a pancake we've got plenty of mountains <laughs> We do. There's mountainous places that I could drive to about two hours away. Okay, I'll put it like this: You're not as flat as Denmark, nor New Mexico, nor Kansas, nor Arizona. Mm -hmm. And I know some people will say flat is justice. Those people are liars. I'm not getting into that. I'm not getting into that. That that war is one you brought on yourself. You have no fucking part of this. Um, I you know I was gonna make a Guargura joke, but nah. I've already I've already Guargura <laughs> got metal on the brain there. That's my baby like. <laughs> Um, you transpose the W and the A. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> also that also that brings off a that brings off a horrifying mental image that I would totally pay somebody to draw. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. The sh the the cute the cute shark. Uh... 
covered in some of the most horrifying face paint. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> look, the antis want to get rid of want to get rid of people in Hollow Live. I just want I just want to give fan, I just want to give that fan base the same treatment they give every fan base. Horrifying nightmares. <laughs> um, As if Gura didn't do that with her original song "Reflect." <laughs> um, rails though. <laughs> yeah, rails. So then we get to exploration next, and we've got we've got a ha- we've got a handful. Um, More than a handful. We've yep. got something like three. I'd, I'd eight, put. I'd put it 10, at a, I'd put twelve, it at, thirteen, yeah, thirteen. Thirteen. So about a page and a half. Um, yeah, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I think this is more Nax than any of the classes so far. I'd say I'd say so. Give or give or take a few. Um, so ancestral guidance, you always have speak with dead prepared, um, and you can, and you can use it to cast once between long rests without spending a slot. When you do so, you don't have to target a corpse. You can target a grave marker, memorial, statue, painting, or other depiction of the deceased creature you wish to talk to. If the chosen creature is not dead, or such creature never existed in the first place, the spell fails. Um, I I like the effect, but there's no explanation for why. This feels like a feat. This feels like a feat turned into a knack. Yeah, I um, I feel... I do. I feel. I feel like with something like when I when I hear something like this, I keep thinking of of um, Hellboy in the first film br- temporarily bringing a dead guy back to life so he could get some information. Yeah. And of course, the guy is the guy is a complete crumudgeon because well, half his body is missing, and he's being sacked along. He's being he's being sacked along by the rope that was used to hang him by a red by a giant red monkey. Yep. Um, let's see, compassionate nurse, expertise, you gain expertise die in medicine checks, and can always just use wisdom when making medicine checks. Boo. That's That again sounds like a a feat in Nax clothing. Yeah. Um, faithful historian, uh, uh, you gain an expertise die in history checks, and you can always it's the same it's rinse and fucking repeat when it comes to compassionate nurse. It's the same thing in a different coat of paint. Yep, another another feet and necks clothing this time for history mm-hmm. instead of medicine. Let's see, gentle healer. During a short rest, your healer's kit aids your allies. A creature you you choose may roll their expended hit dice twice, taking the higher result. You may not expend your own hit dice while using this feature, since you use all your energies to heal your companions. That's got a little bit of narrative flavor to it. I'd say that's a yellow. Yeah. Like, because you're using all of your energy to heal your companions, you forsake healing yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, see, great graceful fall. Falling from a height of greater than 30 feet causes the en- your greater entity to intervene. You are protected as if by the feather fall spell. This does not use your reaction. So That's blue. Yeah, I'm giving that blue. Yeah. Fuck that. It's an automatic feather fall spell. It's an automatic feather fall at any fall greater than thirty feet, mm-hmm. and it even has the fluff for it. Yeah, your greater your greater entity, whatever that is, is reaching out and saying, "You settle on the ground gently now, because I need you to do more shit for me." Yeah, um, monastic austerity. Let's see. You prevent the first level of exhaustion you would take each day, so we can utilize the exhaustion rules. Why aren't we? Ah! Doing- Fuck you! Fuck you! Why didn't you use exhaustion more? Fuck you! Ah! On one hand, I on one hand I feel like I should put this in in yellow. On the other hand, I feel like putting it in red just to be spiteful. Um. I mean, it's yellow because you're preventing first level of exhaustion, and it has a hook, but it's not really a big thing. Whereas Graceful Fall is, oh god, I accidentally got pushed off a cliff. Good thing I'm gonna feather fall. Bye, guys. Man, you could have. Oh man, you could trick a big bad that way. Leap to my doom. Oh. Where's the kaboom? That's supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. <laughs> <sighs> oh. 
let's see, num um, numinous awareness. You s when you see a creature that appears to be a beast, you automatically recognize whether it is a celestial, fiend, or fae. You have advantage on arcana and medicine checks made to interact with magical wounds and maladies caused by celestials, fiends, and fae. Yellow. Yellow because there's no narrative hook. Again, narrative. where's the narrative part of these knacks, guys? Mm -hmm. Half of these just feel like this is a feat, and now it's a knack. Yeah. Um, pre premonition. You have the ability to interpret messages sent to you in dreams or visions by your greater entity. After each long rest, you know either A, a piece of information that'll help you in your endeavors before the end of your next rest, B, how one action will play out before the end. Roll a d20. By the end of your long rest, you may, before the end of your long rest, sorry, you may choose to replace any roll made by a creature you can see within 30 feet of you with the result of this d20 roll. The narrator lets you know which benefit is available whenever you finish a long rest. I'm putting this one in blue. It's nice, and it has a lot of um, a lot of mechanical fodder for the narrator to play with. Mm -hmm. Especially. And Especially since um, the the GM is is um, p is picking one of these two. Yep. Let's see, preser preservation. You can you can sense po you can sense poison in, in, or disease in food, drink, or other consumables. You must have had direct contact with them in their container in order to sense this corruption. Yellow. Okay. Yeah, I would have put it in again. Blue. Feet in Nax clothing. That's, 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 that, that, that seems to be the theme here. There's there, there's no narration to make it feel like a knack, to make it feel like its own thing. Yeah. It just feels like, hey, this is a tiny feat of some sort, or maybe even a subclass feature. Mm -hmm. um, righteous Path. Divine Intuition guides you, th guides you through the tangled paths of constructed or inhabited areas without confusion. Once per day, you may choose to walk the Righteous Path for one hour. While walking the Righteous Path, you are aware when enemies are within 60 feet of you, and you know if backtracking or alternate routes could avoid them. You could also use an action to sense if there are traps within 30 feet, but not the location or nature of the traps. I'm That's a this, blue. Yeah, this is blue. Well, it gives you a narrative reason. You have intuition from the divine, and it guides you through your paths. And then you have to walk the actual path. Mm -hmm. to do it and do you, looking at these do you know what i'm seeing what i feel like multiple people wrote this i feel like multiple people wrote these knacks alone i do not feel like these come from the same person each time i well, feel like we, well this th this project does have multiple writers but i but i'm guessing what you're where you're going with that is that you have multiple writers in isolation yeah, well, like, I think maybe the guy who did uh, Righteous Path and Premonition is the same person. But I think, like, the guy who did Graceful Fall and Monastic Austerity is different, but that guy is the same person. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the person doing all of the ones that we saw from, that would just feel like Feats in Nax clothing, is another separate person. Or maybe even two separate people. That's certainly a possibility. And we lost Doku again. His internet is... Uh... Yep. Technology, it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, soothing words. Your divinely inspired counsel and wise advice can calm troubled minds. You may reduce one ally's strife by one level. Once you use this feature, you cannot do so again until you finish a long rest. Red. Red. One ally strife, one level, and a long rest. Red. Yeah. There's too, ma too many drawbacks, not enough benefit. Yep. Um, supernal intuition. Choose a creature type from fiend, fey, celestial, elemental, or undead. You know when a creature of this type is within 60 feet of you, although you do not know its location. Non-detection pr protects against this feature. You may select this knack multiple times using a different creature type each time. Okay. Yellow. Yellow. Um, feet and feet and knacks clothing again as well. Let's see. Theolo theologian. Years of devoted learning have given you a deep understanding regarding the evolution of religion, theology, and the figures involved. 
And I'm put and I'm putting this in yellow for the reasons that I put those other ones in. It's the That's same. because theologian and voice of doom are are the same thing. Compassionate nurse and faithful historian are except for religion and intimidation. Yeah. Um. So also, okay. So here, those here's. Thi- I need something. I need to point out is that th- those set those sets of knacks are reminding me of the use the force problem that um, Star Wars Saga Edition had. Where okay. Th- where there were multiple there were multiple skills of effects and whatnot that just am- that just amounted to, you can use use the force for this u- for this other thing. Yeah. So the way I see it, looking at just these knacks alone. Um, compassionate nurse, faithful historian, theologian, and voice of doom all look like they copy pasted the second half and changed the skill name and then made up a small blurb for the first half. And that looks like the same author. Then, and those are the ones that feel most like feats in Nax clothing. Mm -hmm. Then we have things like ancestral guidance, uh, gentle healer, um, and numinous awareness. Uh, soothing words and supernal intuition. Those are more knacks that feel like feats, but are oh, and preservation, excuse me, but are not in the same way that they are knacks and defeats. They aren't expertise die. Always choose to use wisdom when making X check. They are a different, a different version, but they're still the na- the feats and knacks clothing. So I think those are two different authors. Then with the ones that are really good, and even if they only have a tiny narrative hook, they have a narrative hook anyway. Um, Graceful Fall, Monastic Austerity, Premonition, Righteous Path. I think Graceful Fall and Monastic Austerity were one person, and then Premonition and Righteous Path were another. Um, Monastic Austerity, I know we, we labeled in yellow just because the effect wasn't great, but the, the actual uh, narrative hook behind it Pretty good. Same with same with Graceful, Graceful Fall. Graceful Fall just you know had a much better effect, so it got the blue. Um, and then of course, Premonition and Righteous Path are both just wonderful, both narratively and mechanically, and I love them dearly. And I'm pretty sure Ashwood too. Yeah. Uh, now this so- unfortunate, unfortunately, um, we cannot do the su- the sub the subclass hour. The subclass power hour is not uh, is not ours to achieve because, unfortunately, prior to the show, while we did provide the subclasses to Ash, he just didn't have the time before his other booking to give us his assessments of uh, of these particular subclasses. Yeah. So there there are. So what I what what I'm going what I'm going to do is next week. Um, we're going to spend a, we're going to spend a bit of time. There's two options, either I, either I put I put it as a pinned comment once he once he give once he gives the list once I upload this, or we dedicate a bit of time covering this next week. Um, honestly, we've we've kept each of these a uh, particular um document discussions pretty Mm self-contained i don't think adding on the subclass hour from another document into a new one is i think it'd break the pacing and i think it would also kind of break focus Mm -hmm. um so i don't think that that's a viable option that that one um maybe i don't know maybe uh it could be a small addendum at the end of that one. You could do it at the end. You could say, all right, and because you missed so-and-so power hour uh, last time on Cleric, we can do a second power hour for them after this first one. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, that, those, those are what we're, those are what we're considering. And we'll, we'll, pro- we'll end up, fi- we'll end up finding out in a week anyways. Um, but we're, we're not going, but, we're not completely out of the woods when it comes to casters yet. We're going to be dealing with a caster next week that allows me to make make a uh, make, return a joke that I put that I put up on Twitter a year ago, <laughs> and um exp- and explain why and explain why I use this thing to take the piss. 
But that'll be a that'll be a story for seven days from now. So until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody.